Hey Wonderly, I'm Karen Cabot and I'm going to share a little DIY project with all of you today. We have a ton of booktubers in Wonderly from E. Lizzie Books to Cast J. Tuck to Books and Quills and even more. So obviously we all love talking about books, but don't you wish you could express that love through your jewelry? Well today I'm going to show you how to make miniature book necklaces that actually function as real books. There are a lot of supplies for this project, but most of them can probably already be found around your house. You're going to need a cutting mat, decorative paper, either glue or tape, an exacto knife, an awl, a bone folder or a spoon if you don't have one, a writing utensil, thread, a needle, pliers, a binder clip, thin cardboard, mine is from a tissue box, a book that you don't mind cutting up or sheets of blank paper, scissors, a book headband, a ruler, a large jump ring, a necklace chain, and something heavy to weigh the book down while it dries. Okay, that was a lot of materials for a very little final result. But now that we've gathered them all up, let's get started. The first step is to create the interior pages. I'm going to use this copy of Gone with the Wind that I've been tearing up for years now, but you can also just use blank paper. Cut your pages down to whatever size you want and then fold them in half. I made this book two and a half centimeters tall, but you can do any size you want. Once you've folded them in half, stack them up and keep cutting out pages until the stack is the width that you want. If the edges aren't quite even, you can sand them down with fine sandpaper, but if you're more precise than I was, it's not always necessary. Now, move your binder clip to be on the side of the book with the open pages, not the folded ones. You can use your bone folder or the back of a spoon to make sure all your folds are really crisp. Then take your awl and poke three holes all the way through your pages, one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. Thread your needle, but don't tie a knot at the two open ends. Take your needle, and going from the back of the book to the front, thread it through the middle hole, then thread it down through the bottom hole, back up through the middle hole, down through the top hole, and then you should be able to tie the two ends together to finish the figure eight. If you want to make the book stronger, you can go around the entire loop again, or use book thread, which is a waxed thread that you can find at art stores. Next is an optional step, but I think it adds a bit of realness to the book. You can buy book headbands at an art store, and you just cut off two sections that are the same width as your book. Now, whether or not you have the headband, apply a layer of glue on the book's spine, and then either attach the headbands or a small piece of tissue paper to keep it all together. You can also just put a piece of tape on the spine if you don't want to mess around with glue. So that's the interior of your book finished. Let's move on to the cover. Take your thin cardboard, mine is from a tissue box, and mark off a rectangle that's a little bit bigger on each side than the full width of your book. You want the spine to be the exact width as your stack of pages, but the edges can extend a little bit past the interior pages. Cut that out and score and fold where the folds are going to be, and then put the interior of the book inside to test out the size. If it's too big, just cut it down slightly until it fits nice and snug. Now, take your piece of decorative paper and cut one rectangle that's slightly smaller than your cardboard piece, and one that's about a centimeter larger in every direction. Put a layer of glue on the outside of your book cover and attach the larger piece of paper. Cut off the corners and then glue down the flaps inside. Once that's all attached and dry, put another layer of glue inside the cover and glue on the smaller piece of paper. Make sure that you fold the cardboard back into its shape so that the glue can dry in that shape. Now is the part where you actually make it a necklace. If you don't want it to be a necklace and you just want a miniature book, you can skip this step, but trust me, it's really easy. Just take your awl and poke a hole at the top of the spine. Use your pliers to open your jump ring and string it onto the book cover, and then your pliers to close it up again. Now we're almost done. It's time to attach the interior of the book to the cover. You can add end pages if you want, but since the book is so small, I don't want to put too much extra stuff inside, so I'm just going to put a layer of glue on the front and back inside covers, not the spine, and place the book inside. Mop up any glue that bleeds out onto the pages so that they don't stick together, and then place something heavy on top of the book overnight while it dries. And that's all there is to it. String a necklace chain through the jump ring and now you have your own functional miniature book necklace. There are so many ways to modify this. You can make them at any size and any thickness that you want. And instead of using decorative paper, you can also print out miniature covers of famous books if you wanted a mini Harry Potter or a mini The Fault in Our Stars. One thing to note though, these necklaces are not waterproof, so if it starts raining, you might want to tuck it into your bag. I'd love to see what yours look like if you decide to make one, so feel free to tweet me at, at Karen Cavett or tag me in a Tumblr post with Karen Cavett. 
So make sure to subscribe to the Wonderly channel for more DIY videos and tons of other fun videos.